The majority of people that come in for corrective jaw surgery also called orthognathic surgery is because they can't get their teeth together. Uh, many patients also have difficulty with breathing, uh, snoring, uh, difficulty with sleep apnea, those sorts of things, and occasionally even with uh, temporomandibular joint or TMJ problems. Probably one of the biggest misconceptions about corrective jaw surgery is, is wiring the jaw together, and the other thing is, are you going to break my jaw? And I, if, if I had a, a dollar for every time that I heard that, uh, I, could, I could endow a, a, a chair position at OU. Uh, it's the, absolutely the most common thing that we hear, and the fact of the matter is for about 25 years, we've not wired jaws together. As a matter of fact, we've developed, uh, and this is a particular plating system that I developed uh, that facilitates us taking the upper and the lower jaw apart and basically segmentalizing it so that we can move it any direction that we want and then uh, placing it back together in a very firm, very rigid way that precludes uh, an individual from having their jaws wired together. Now, as to breaking the jaw, really, it, it's not breaking at all. We're actually using uh, instrumentation that allows us to make what are called osteotomies, or cuts in the bone, that facilitate us to use just a very small amount of pressure to separate the jaws in a way uh, that allows us to mobilize them and move them three-dimensionally, depending on what the patient's needs are. Sometimes so if you see someone with a real gummy, gummy smile, we might move the jaw up a little bit. Uh, if they've got a real receded chin, we might actually move the jaw forward a little bit. Uh, I use a lot of what are called tr uh, rotational movements of the uh, upper and lower jaw or, or the maxillomandibular complex in which we really kind of reverse engineer uh, what we want that final end result to look like and basically uh, put the jaws and the teeth in that position uh, knowing what the final outcome is going to be rather than relying on simple numbers and those sorts of things. Uh, which I think uh, when you look at the goals of what we're doing, which are getting the teeth in the right spot, correcting the abnormal facial skin skeleton, but anytime you're doing that, you're going to have an impact on the soft tissues, meaning that you're going to have some outward or aesthetic change. And so we want to maximize that as well. I mean, it's one thing to have your teeth come together, and it's a totally different thing to have them come together and you don't particularly like the way it looks, at least outwardly.